are simply delighted to have you here with us this day on our 40th of month before. This is such a fabulous and outstanding moment. Mm -hmm. And so I'm Vivian Gaston, and I'm one of the conveners for um, this 40th anniversary. This forum has an incredible legacy of focusing on deep, analytical, and critical work. This is an opportunity for discussions across areas in education, social sciences, humanities. Our focus on culture and cultural dimensions of learning, teaching, schooling, and interacting in the world are very present. And we give attention to the content in which, the context rather, in which students learn and live. And the beauty of this field, as it's true of all fields, is that we see shifts. We see the ways in which this field grows. It may appear to contract, but it moves in various directions. You know, every year, the convener, this, this forum, takes on, to a large degree, the interests of the conveners. It's a natural. But each year, the conveners bring their special and deep dedication and commitment to the very idea of that topic. And so we are very pleased, we are thrilled to see you here today to share this moment with us, to participate in what we know will be critical dialogue, and we hope some fun, and that you will have an experience here that has deep meaning for you, and that will allow you to extend and expand the core of work and commitments to our field. So every so often, you get an opportunity to work with someone very closely for whom you have not only great respect, but enormous affection. And I have been so pleased this year, as I am every day to have and as the chair of my division, to work with my colleague, Carol Christina, who is the other co-convener of the forum. So I can say any number of wonderful things about Gerald, and of course, you all would chime in. But for now, I will just welcome him to come make the introduction for our associate dean, Matt Martin. Gerald is an outstanding <coughs> colleague and, and scholar. He is the chair of the division, which we call here, Literacy, Culture, and and uh, international education. He has this incredible project that you will hear a lot about, and of course, many of the students will be uh, from that project will be participating in presenting today. And in general, he's a person of enormous goodwill, as I said before, intellect, and great humility. And so it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, and I have to say this, my former student. <laughs> 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 Dr. Hartley's research and writing focused on how universities are governed. 
His current work explores how university leaders are responding to major education reforms. Dr. Hartley's work has global reach, taking him to Kazakhstan, Vietnam, Singapore, and India, examining how these nations have sought to establish world-class universities. He has also been engaged in a project aimed at supporting senior academic leaders in Southeast Asia to develop communities of practice. From 2010 to 2012, Dr. Hartley served as an expert for the World Bank on a project examining the governance of universities in the Middle East and North Africa. He has also worked for the Council of Europe in Strasbourg, France, exploring the relationship between university schools and civil society. In 2011, he completed a Fulbright in Slovakia in partnership with the Slovak Governance Institute, examining the launch of community-based learning efforts at several universities. Yet despite all this world travel and despite all this global reach, he partly has also had a profound commitment to the local. Whether this has involved rethinking university civic engagement and community partnerships through the Better Center, or just being an outstanding teacher, mentor, colleague, and citizen of our Graduate School of Education at the University of Pennsylvania. Thank you, Matt, for being here this morning. Let's give Associate Dean Hartley a warm welcome. Thanks, Gerald. Well, it's, it is my great uh, pleasure uh, to welcome you all to Philadelphia and GSE uh, and to the 40th anniversary of the uh, Ethnography in Education Research Forum. I joined um, NGSE uh, 18 years ago as an assistant professor, and one of the very few things I knew about it was its deep commitment uh, to different ways of knowing, especially its commitment to ethnography. And I think that the Ethnography Forum is a really wonderful expression of that commitment. Um, it's played an incredibly important role in the field of education as it gathers us from ongoing conversation between generations of scholars that come together across disciplinary and, and even national boundaries to share ideas. And this uh, anniversary in particular is an opportunity for us to take stock of the breadth and depth of, uh, of ethnographic research and also think about what the future might hold the field. Um, over the past uh, 40 years, many people have helped steer this long-standing conversation by serving as conveners of the Forum Practitioner Inquiry Day. But I would like, especially like um, to thank my uh, really wonderful colleagues, uh, Vivian Gaston, who's in the back, and uh, Gerald, who's up front, uh, for their work leading uh, uh, the efforts this year. So please join me in that. Uh, and on this uh, anniversary, I think it's also uh, fitting that we remember others that have provided leadership in the past. Um, people like Fred Erickson and Nancy Hornberger, uh, Stan Borland, Kathy Hall, uh, Susan Lyle, Marilyn Hopkins, Chris, and I think it's also important to remember that the forum has a long tradition of honoring and holding up voices uh, of teachers, parents, community leaders, and youth. People from Philadelphia and people from many, many other communities. And this comes from the recognition that the experts uh, are not people from the university. It's the practitioners in the field, and it is the people in the communities who see and understand how educational issues are playing out in the lives of their children and in the institutions and organizations that are trying to serve them. They really see what's happening. Exactly 40 years ago, in 1979, John Van Manen, whose research has been a very influential in my own work, wrote a conceptual piece that was entitled um, The Fact of Fiction in uh, Organizational Ethnography. And in that piece he said, even at the end of a long study, the theories proclaimed by ethnographers are likely to be only tentatively asserted, full of reservation <coughs> and qualifying detail. We live in a world where our critics, policymakers, uh, and God help us, politicians are full of certainties. 
Certainties about why poverty exists. Certainties about why certain children are left behind. Certainties about what our schools and communities need. And we need research that troubles that certainty. And we need research that leads to tentative assertions with qualifying detail because that is precisely the research that reflects the complexities of the real world and offers a pathway to meaningful change. It is the kind of research that has called us together here for the next two days, and I hope will call us together uh, for many, many years to come. Thank you again for being here, for being a part of this ongoing conversation, and again, welcome.
from their own work, but also from the field more broadly, in a complementary and, and, and reciprocal um, way, certainly dialogic. And then we will have later on this evening a talk by Dr. Nayila Suad Nasir, the president of the Spencer Foundation. Um, tomorrow morning, um, we are honored, and Gerald will talk a bit more about this, Dr. Um, Tarjeen Yazi Mintz, whose work um, has been very outstanding in looking at Native populations throughout the country, but also with a deep commitment to making a difference within communities. Um, and then tomorrow uh, evening, we will have an intergenerational, what we're calling an intergenerational panel. And these are people who are, who have been co-conveners at the forum, but also we try to identify people in what we consider different generations of our field. So that we deal, so that we address both what is currently and historically been important in our field, but also how can we imagine, how can we go further in thinking about what our field might be able to do? Um, our colleague here, Deborah Thomas, is doing some work. She's calling um, the experimental ethnographies. Um, we have incredible work around media and technology, um, but it's not just there. It um, asks us to embrace what um, Matt refers to as uncertainty. And allowing that uncertainty to let us think broadly in an intellectual tradition how we can make the best of the genre that we call ethnography. And so with that, I'm going to have Gerald talk a little bit more about one of the dearest and most important <coughs> part of our work here at um, Penn GSC, um, focusing on practitioner interest. Yeah, just a few brief comments. It's the 40th anniversary of the forum, <coughs> but it's the 30th year that we had practitioner inquiry day, which is officially tomorrow. Um, which has been, as I mentioned, uh, part of the forum of, and a real effort to kind of um, uh, really democratize knowledge production. Um, we have Dr. Tarji Gazi, as Vivian mentioned, doing our opening plenary. Um, I also want to highlight uh, Joanne Larson from Rochester and colleagues who will be doing a brown bag um, panel, a future brown bag panel, and that's called the Communities of Inquiry Panel. And that was conceptualized a few years ago because part of the reasoning behind it is that although sometimes in academia we put on a pedestal like individual thinkers and researchers, a lot of really important work in education is really done through collectivities. And this is a collectivity that has been working together for over a decade, a partner community, university, school, partnership that involves many people all bringing knowledge having to build trust, having to work through struggles over time. So I really want to highlight that session as well. I think the last thing I want to say is in the tradition of Practitioner Inquiry Day, we have a number, we've always had um, a number of youth and families from Philadelphia and beyond, um, including from St. Thomas Aquinas in South Philadelphia. Um, we have undergraduates coming from the University of Connecticut doing research uh, on their experiences as college students. Um, and many, many other youth, sometimes coming from across the country. And anything that you can do to, to celebrate them and to value their knowledge, value their scholarship, and value their, re their research, you know, that would be wonderful. So thank you. So we are, um, we try to be intentional in bringing a range of groups to the forum. And um, our work is not done. So if you have other ideas, we welcome it. But we are really honored to have um, such a wide array of people come join us. Um, there is one panel that we have not noted, um, and that is the panel on um, our colleague, Ryan Street. Next. Tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so that panel will be tomorrow um, with several of our colleagues who will offer perspectives that emanate from the work. He was not just a colleague of the forum, but he actually was a visiting faculty member in um, the Graduate School of Education for some 20 some odd years at that forum. So um, <coughs> we are looking forward to that. And anyone who's been touched or influenced by Brian personally or his scholarship, you know, 
um, there's going to be time in the panel for everyone to kind of share. So we really encourage you to go if you are connected to Brian's lights. So this is both a joyous and a joyful um, occasion. Um, we are in a great city. We just want to tell you that there are lots of things to do in the city of brotherly love. Um, as well as um, the, the Penn Museum um, close by. We hope that we'll have all these wonderful things in Philadelphia will not distract you from your purpose here um, over the next two days. But um, we, <laughs> we are looking forward to um, a very active and engaging meeting. We want to thank you again for coming and for you know, you come here, and um, not only do we want you to be to have your work enhanced by what goes on over the next two days, we want you to know that we at the University of Pennsylvania are enriched by both your presence and the work that you're doing in the world. So please enjoy the next couple of days, and we look forward to having conversations. Thank you.